Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. Today, I'm going to talk about the custom function menus on the Canon EOS 1DX Mark II. This is something that everybody asks me about. Now, if you find this video helpful or you find good information in any of the other videos on my channel, please subscribe. That will keep you abreast of when we put new stuff up and it will help us keep a successful channel. A couple of thoughts before I, uh, I start on the menu items. Uh, first of all, this is an EOS 1D X Mark II, but most Canon Pro bodies, the 5D Mark IV, the 7D Mark II, have a very similar menu structure. So what I say about this camera, to, some, to a great extent, applies to pretty much all the Canon Pro bodies. Secondly, these are the menu items that I know and I use. I don't do video, so I'm not going to talk about the video items. I'm not going to discuss every item on the menu. I'm going to tell you the ones that I think are important and that I use in my shooting. A couple things I want to mention before uh, we get to the actual menu items. Uh, the first is a button on the back of the camera that says it's got Q. It's usually in the, about the middle of the back of the camera, at least it is on the uh, EOS 1D X Mark II. When you press this button, you get a handy little screen that kind of gives you all the information that you need from your camera. The Q button will also allow you to move between menu groups without having to use the joystick. So this is a fast way to get around your menus. Another button on the back of the camera is the info button. Now the info button will give you various screens with information, but it will also uh, do something else. When you're in a menu, and you see the little square info help, like when you're trying to figure out your, uh, your cases for autofocus, hit the info button and it tells you a lot about it. Now, that may help you, it may not, but at least it's there. And um, it's something that I didn't know about for six months of using this camera. Now, Canon has their own names for each of these group of menu items. I'm just gonna refer to them by the color. First menu being red. Now we'll start on the first screen of red. Okay, starting on the red menu, white balance. Um, again, we're gonna talk about my personal taste. So my personal taste is uh, my favorite 70s uh, rock band, AWB, the average white band. Um, I know people in some instances uh, go to great lengths to adjust white balance for a specific uh, venue. If you shot in the same place all the time, you'd probably wanna do that. Um, I shoot RAW plus JPEG, so I can adjust that white balance after the fact. So we don't do a custom white balance, we don't shift. Color space. Most conventional wisdom has been to shoot sRGB to avoid out of gamut colors. Um, it's been pointed out to me by folks at Canon that the Canon printers will now print a wider gamut of colors than in the past. So Adobe RGB is really the way to go at this point. I'm not a color expert, but I defer to Canon on this one. Picture style. Now, again, this is for the JPEG shooter more than uh, more than the RAW shooter because this can be adjusted after the fact. But you have a lot of choices here. Uh, I just stick with fine detail. If I am going to pull from a JPEG, I'd like it to be sharp. The other alternative, I think, would be neutral. But uh, lens aberration correction. This is a very nice feature, and you'll see that. Uh, it tells me, it knows what lens is on there and it corrects for it. So again, this is a very worthwhile feature to have uh, enabled. Enable, okay, boom, boom. Uh, multiple exposure, that could be a whole hour episode. Multiple exposure is magical and mysterious. And I don't know anybody who really has it down. But you can do a lot of things with this. I, uh, I actually, since I never read the manuals like most, most pro photographers. Uh, another photographer uh, told me about this before the, uh, the Olympics and I was able to play around with it and I made some interesting pictures. 
but I'm not quite sure how I did or what I did. So uh, play with it. Uh, sometime I will do a whole episode on it. Okay, next bunch. Image type and size. I like to shoot raw for my final product. Uh, I would like. I believe that that's the best you can get out of the camera. Um, and I shoot large raw. I don't really see what else, why you'd shoot raw if you didn't. And I shoot large JPEGs. Again, on the EOS 1D X Mark II, you use CFast cards, you get a pile of pictures in your buffer, and you have that JPEG if you need something fast and dirty. ISO speed settings, well again, you can adjust this a lot of ways. I leave the range as, as wide as possible. Minimum shutter speed, um, a thousandth of a second. I don't like it to go below that. So, um, but mostly I set the ISO on the, on the screen on top of the camera. Auto light optimizer. Moving on. Um, okay, these, all right. <clears throat> Auto light optimizer, long exposure noise reduction, high ISO speed noise reduction, high lo highlight tone priority. All these are important if you shoot JPEG, but not if you shoot RAW. So I really don't do much with them. Image review off. I don't really like the image popping up. Beep. That's a that's a personal taste. Release shutter without card. Always disable this. This will save you from the old. There's no card in the camera. I just shot the greatest play in all of football, and there's no card in the camera. Uh, mirror lockup. That's not really something I use. Dust delete data. Um, I have never updated this. I probably should. Uh, refer to manual. Well, I lost my manual, so oh, now it's going to clean the sensor. Okay. Okay, external speed light control. Uh, I don't shoot much with uh, on camera flash or speed light type flash, but this is great if you do because you if you have that speed light off the camera, you can bring the all the data to control it into the camera. Very handy for that. Anti-flicker shoot. This is a really sort of mystical thing that um, if you shoot under uh, old style lighting, high school fields, you'll notice if you shoot a sequence that there's actually a change in exposure and color balance if you shoot a high speed sequence. Anti-flicker shoot corrects for that. I don't know how it does. How does it know? I have no idea. But this will correct for that. However, it does slow down. It takes a, there's a little bit of a hesitation when you start to fire, but it's amazing what it'll do. Very, very helpful. Live view, I don't turn it on often. Uh, the best time to use that is when you're setting up a remote. You can see what you're getting through the camera. Uh, this AF method is for video. Um, grid display, I leave that off. Um, these are not things I, I really use. Silent live shoot, again, not something I use. Metering timer, all this stuff is, I would just leave it alone. On to the purple, autofocus. What case do you like? Um, I will say if, it only, if this camera only came with case one, it would be still the best autofocusing camera I've ever used. Uh, case two, uh, it's good for staying on subjects, but it's a little slow to acquire subjects. Case three, very fast acquiring. I find it doesn't stick. These are all my personal opinions. Case four, I like case four a lot. This is what I shoot most of the time is case four. I do not mess with cases five and six. Um, they're, the camera's doing a little bit more than I'd like it to do. I like case four. Uh, AI servo first image priority. I think that this camera focuses quickly enough and accurately enough that I leave it at equal in the middle. Boom. Same thing with uh, second image priority in the middle. Uh, lens electric MF. I really don't know what that means, but I'm told to leave it on. AF assist beam. That's only if you're using a, a, a um, AF assist beam is when you're using a speed light. One shot, I never use one shot. I always set the camera autofocus on AI servo. So one shot is not uh, part of my repertoire. Okay, auto 
AF, PT, SEL, EOS, ITR, AF. Folks at Canon tell me that this is a very helpful thing that allows the camera to use color as well as uh, shapes to autofocus. I turn it on. Lens drive when AF impossible, on. Selectable AF point. Okay, I just like the cross type uh, AF points. There's 61 of those. That's plenty. Um, select AF area, select mode. Again, this is a personal thing. You can go from a very small up to a square. This is one I like, the four uh, top, bottom, and either side, or the nine grid with the center focus. Um, the manual select large zone. I don't mess with the large zones. I like to keep it pretty much uh, in a smaller area there. And you can deselect these that you don't want to ever have to cycle through. AF selection method, again, that's sort of a personal, what button do you want, what dial do you want? Orientation linked AF point. This is very handy. This allows you to have your AF point in one way when you're shooting horizontal, I like it in the center, and another way when you turn the camera to vertical. When I'm shooting vertical, I usually tend to move the spots up towards the top of the frame, so I'm more likely to get uh, focus on the face if I'm shooting a person. Initial AF point, AI Servo AF. This allows you to tell the camera that you want the center point, the original point, as the first point of focus, or let the camera decide on its own. I like to control it myself. AF point selection movement, this is personal taste, AF point display during focus, same thing, do you want to see it or not, brightness, status, micro adjustment is something that I, I have never done, I don't do, I let Canon do all the adjusting on my cameras and lenses. Okay, the blue, there's not much in the blue that I use because I don't, uh, I don't print out of my camera. Um, and I don't process images out of my camera. But there is one magnification actual size. What this means is uh, when you go to review your image on the back of your camera, it will immediately go to the exact point in the image where the autofocus points were. So you can see what you want to be sharp, you can see if it's sharp or not, rather than ending up over on the side of the picture and having to, uh, this is when you zoom, when you zoom. All right, we're into the yellow. Record function, card folder select. I like to use this at standard. Um, this is also can be used to auto switch cards, but now with the EOS 1DX Mark II, we have one CF slot and one CFast slot. So pretty much just stay on the CFast card. Okay, file numbering, continuous. You don't want it to stop because you'll, you'll stop, your camera will stop and you won't know what it's, what it's doing, so you want that continuous. File name, you can name your files. I have put it PRM1. You can name your files or you can use a preset. Auto rotate, this is for viewing the, the files both on the computer and the camera or on the computer. So you can actually have it so that I, I like to turn the camera vertical when I have a vertical shot because if it rotates it to horizontal the image is a lot smaller. Um, this way it will rotate on the computer, it won't rotate in the camera. Format card, we all know what that is. LCD brightness, you gotta watch out for this. Um, you know we all look at histograms, we all, all know what we're supposed to do but oftentimes we just look at the LCD and see is this exposure look good? So you want to make sure that brightness is centered in the middle because if it's off, then you're going to be getting a whole bunch of bad information about your exposure. Uh, color tone standard. Auto power off, I've disabled that for the purpose of this demo so we don't quit in the middle. I tend to leave it off. It will wear your battery down a little bit faster, but I usually make it through a four hour football game with, without a problem. Date and time, always good to have this set properly, um, especially if you're using a couple of cameras, because if you're shooting a game, for example, and you have two cameras and the time is not set correctly on both of them, 
When you go into your photo mechanic or your Lightroom and you want to see everything in chronological order, it's not going to work. So keep that, pay attention to that. English language, um, info button display options. That's displaying the camera settings, the electronic level, the whole thing. This, this controls the info button. It'll give you all these things in order on the screen. Custom quick control. This is a wonderful thing. Start editing layout. No, forget about that. That's something else. What is this? Start editing layout. All right. Custom quick control doesn't really apply here. <laughs> On to the orange menus. Oh, no. Video system. Don't do video. Battery info. Handy to have. Uh, sensor cleaning. Not right now. Communications. We don't have... Uh, Wi-Fi, I don't use the Wi-Fi, and uh, this is all, you know, GPS settings, don't have the GPS, and HDMI frame rate is auto, um, not applying. Let's see, does this have GPS? No, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, save load camera settings on card. This is a way uh, you can save your settings on your camera uh, and then put that card in another camera and uh, have the same settings. It's, it's much easier than going through and doing every little menu item and, and setting that you, uh, that you have on one camera. If, say, you're renting a camera, you're borrowing a camera, you just have a second camera that you happen to get, uh, this is a very handy way to bring that camera up to speed quickly. Uh, custom shooting mode, don't do that. Clear all settings, copyright, system status, these are all Firmware, you really want to keep your firmware up to date. You can check the Canon website, or if you look at any of the sites on the web that deal with photography, they'll usually let you know when there's a new firmware version coming out. Okay, into the orange. Exposure level increments, I think a third is fine. ISO a third, bracketing auto cancel. Um, spot meter linked to AF point, I think that's a good thing. Uh, linked to active AF point. Number of bracketed, well I don't really do a lot of bracketing, so that's not that safety shift uh that's when you reach a certain point where you're below uh the presets on your on your exposure uh this will automatically shift and i use iso because that's the one thing that's going to affect the image the least same exposure for new aperture i'm going to turn that on iso speed so this means when you put it in an extender for example so if you're at 2.8 um at a thousandth at ISO 400 I put in the extender and now the, the effective aperture is f4 this will make my ISO 800 automatically so I don't have to keep thinking about that this is a very handy thing restrict shooting modes restrict metering modes I don't know why I never do it metering used in manual exposure yes a lot of these things are just kind of uh, very micromanaging things uh, restrict drive modes. Why would you do that? Continuous shooting speed. You want that to be the highest possible speed. Okay, focusing, focusing screen, standard, standard, standard. All these things are kind of personal taste items. But here's one. This is a gem. This is the best thing in the new Canon menu, menu system. Custom controls. It shows you a picture of the camera and you can go around button by button and it gives you all the options for each button. This is great. For example, I keep my autofocus on the back button. So I just have the shutter to start the metering, but you could, I could put the autofocus there too. Um, I could put essentially a AE lock there, but this is fine. It starts the metering. Um, as I go around, I like both my back buttons to be for autofocus in case my thumb doesn't quite reach over there and on through so you can you can really this is so customizable and this is in the old canon menu system you had to kind of try and figure out what each button did this shows you this is so nice so nice okay and the record uh, voice memos are um, are handy things to do if you're shooting swimming golf anything that has a lot of different people and someone else is editing especially swimming. Swimming is probably the toughest. To, to be able to put a little voice memo, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Phelps in lane six, something like that, is a big help. Uh, again, stuff that really isn't, I don't mess with. 
clear all custom functions, not today. Okay, here is the green menu. This is a kind of build it your own, build your own menu. You can put whatever items you want from all the other menus on this menu so that you can just go to it immediately and see all the items that you, you care about. Okay, on the green menu, if you want to add an, uh, an item, select items. Okay, let's say we want to add uh, image type and size. Boom. Boom. And now we go menu and menu. And now we have image type and size right on this easy go-to menu. I usually put like battery level, a couple of things like that that I would change during, during shooting. Uh, I'd put it on there. So that's about it for menu items. Uh, again, I want to stress, these are my personal choices. These are the things that work for me. Your mileage may vary. If you have any thoughts uh, or questions, please feel free to use the comment section on my YouTube page. And please subscribe. Have a good shoot.